The Bible is the word of Almighty God. Therefore, it does not need to be defended, only understood. The purpose of this program is to present to you, our viewers, the key to understanding the scriptures. There is within the pages of the Bible itself a God-given design for studying the Bible. All the confusion that exists within Christianity today is the result of two failures. Number one, ignoring God's design for Bible study, and number two, failing to believe what the Bible actually says. We remind you of what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5.18, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall abide forever. We're instructed in Romans 3.4, Let God be true, but every man a liar. We are informed by 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And as well, God tells us how to study his word in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study the show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's God's design, rightly dividing the word of truth, not according to your liking, not into verses you want or don't want to obey, but making distinctions where God makes distinctions, obeying that portion of the Bible that is specifically addressed to us today. Now a dramatization by Brother Jim Pittman portraying the Apostle Paul in prison dictating the book of Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him." in whom also we have, we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe, according to the working of His mighty power which He wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, 
among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, that we should walk therein. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For He is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in Himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that He might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you that were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of His promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things in Christ Jesus, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Savior Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, 
beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that He might fill all things. And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but may grow up into Him in all things which is the head even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joint together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working of the measure, and every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in, in Jesus that ye put off the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, even as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us to God for a sacrifice and a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once be named among you as becometh saints, neither, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, or unclean person, or covetousness man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience." 
Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, even so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present it unto Him a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives even as themselves. For he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Children, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them which are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart, as unto the Lord, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the service of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. And ye masters do the same things unto them, knowing also that your master which is in heaven, neither is their respect of person with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole 
armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known unto you all things, whom I send unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, with love and faith from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. Take away my vision from my eyes that now now can see deprive me of the food i eat and even bind my hands and my feet but as long as i have jesus you know that i could still go free that I could still go free. What kind of man would reach down his hands and do this for me? Unworthy to live and not fit to kill. Yet a man on a cross puts me in His will and says that I could still go free. I never could quite understand why the Creator would want to leave His throne. Take on the robe of an earthly man Fill the pain of flesh, flesh and bones. Then later walk that lonely path that leads to Calvary with the bloodshed stains broke all my chains and said that I could still go free, that I could still go free. Oh, what kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me? Unworthy to live. And they stoned Stephen's calling upon God. And the young man and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and not fit to kill. Yet a man on the cross would put me in his will and say that I could still go free. Oh, that I could still go free. Oh, what kind of man 
would reach down his hands and do this for me. Unworthy to live and not fit to kill, yet a man on a cross puts me in his will and says that I could still go free. God satisfied with the work of my Savior, He gave His life blood on cruel Calvary. When I received Him, He saved me completely, and now I'm longing my Savior to see. I know I'm seated in heavenly places, all spiritual blessings have been given to me. I am an ambassador for my heavenly Father to show all lost world that they can He made a promise and through his special apostle revealed a mystery never known in the past. I know I'm seated in heavenly places. All spiritual blessings have been given. For my heavenly Father to show a lost world that they can be free. So I won't see Him returning from glory, for He'll secretly send me a way to be with Him there. Oh, what a just to be with my Savior, that I may serve Him eternally there. I know I'm seated in heavenly places. All spiritual blessings have been given to me. I am an ambassador. For my heavenly Father To show a lost world That they can be free Thank you for sharing this time with us. Join us again this same time next week to learn more about God's message of grace. Until then, this is Daniel Schulert speaking for all of us at Grace Bible Church, praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe.